You're watching Flow Working, the entrepreneur's podcast. I'm your host, Megan Anderson. More people than ever are starting the entrepreneur journey and learning a lot in the process. On this show, I sit down with regular people who are running all types of businesses to discuss the ideas, opportunities, and strategies they're using to build, grow, and thrive as an entrepreneur. Before we get started, make sure you tap the button and subscribe to the channel. Then hit like and share your favorite videos with others. Okay, now on with the show. Hello, welcome to this episode. I'm your host, Megan Anderson, and today I'm joined by my guest, Jamie Barlett. Jamie found PolyPay in 2013 to provide businesses with a partner who offers them honesty, transparency, customer support, and savings for merchant processing. She draws on her experience in consulting, finance, HR, technology, and leadership development every day at PolyPay. She's originally from Bloomfield Hills, Michigan, and attended Wellesley College, earning a degree in English and economics. She also received an MBA from Pepperdine University. Jamie loves interacting with customers and learning more about how they started their business, and what's important to them. She lives in Arroyo Grande, California, and Columbus, Ohio, with her 15-year-old rescue Silky Terrier, Spike. Jamie, welcome to the show. Thanks for joining me today. Yeah, I'm excited. Happy to be here. Yes, yes. We get to have a conversation about finance. We don't often get to have these these on the show, um, but it is always a hugely important topic to those of us in the entrepreneurial world about how to take money, how to manage finance, all of the money related topics. So let's start a little bit about your journey um, through becoming an entrepreneur, Um, especially probably as a woman in what I'm assuming is a tech based company, that that journey was probably a very interesting one. So if you don't mind, we'll start there and just share a little bit about your story and how you got started with PolyPay. Sure, absolutely. Um, I was, uh, first of all, never thought I would go down the entrepreneur road at all, Megan. I was very much a risk averse person. I always thought I would be the person that was at a big company, you know, stay 25 years, get your gold watch. Um, I'm showing how old I am for that. Um, But, you know, there there was always that I was always in big entities, companies that had, you know, uh, 100,000 employees and then another that was in 25,000. So you were just sort of a wheel in the cog. And I thought that I was comfortable in just sort of being nestled into my cubicle and, you know, do your portion and go home. And uh, and I enjoyed that a lot. I think I learned a lot from those structures. If anything, truly, I learned how to be a better boss, I felt, and then kind of how to be a better problem solver. Because when I started with others at, at different companies trying to come up with solutions or new ideas, there was a lot of pushback. Um, yeah. It took a long time to try and get things moving, the suggestions, getting suggestions into any action took a long time, if at ever. So you kind of got disheartened after a while. And mm-hmm. I thought, I got to a point where I thought, well, the only way one can really have ultimate control is if you're going to go out there and hang up your own tent pole and say, yeah. this is going to be my land and I hope people come and visit me, right? And yeah. and like what I do. Um, and my uh, background, as you said, is more very much kind of economics, but English, I'm, you know, I'm a Shakespeare nut. I <laughs> uh, would, never would have thought into the finance world, but I, I grew up with a, a family that was in banking a lot. So mm-hmm. banking was a big part of, of day to day people's learning, watching as I grew up, how important people's money were, was and how to protect that and mm-hmm. uh, to continue to let it grow. And I thought, well, what's an industry? um that i could be a problem solver in and Mm -hmm. i thought well you know i'd read a bit about payment processing and credit cards and um there were certainly not a lot of women at the time there's a bit more now megan but it's still it's still uh uh, very much more of a a masculine world um but i thought you know that's a problem to fix it's such a big thing for people starting businesses is how Mm -hmm. you get your money on a day-to-day process Um, are you getting it correctly? Are, do you, are you taking payments the way you want to? Is it secure? Yeah. Um, are you doing everything you can for your customers at mm-hmm. the same time? Are you offering what you need to have? And, you know, are you paying too much for what uh, for what you're getting? And I thought, well, that's a problem I'd like to solve. So that's kind of how PolyPay was born. And it was kind of just born out of the name of many ways to pay. So there's, mm-hmm. you know, lots of different options. And, and so that's kind of how I settled into the entrepreneur nook uh several years ago wow so kind of ventured out into something that you were familiar with but definitely as a woman in finance it is 
it is very much a man's world. I worked yeah. myself. I worked not in the front. I was always the back office for financial advisors mm -hmm. for years. Mm -hmm. And very similar thing. Just not a lot of women in the field. No, no. Definitely so, not. And still, it's got it's gotten better, Megan. Yeah. But it's it's still there's some some I run into a lot of women that are in maybe the sales portion of mm -hmm. it, uh, but not a lot more on the executive side. And yep. um, I'm sure the statistic has changed a little bit, but it's one I throw out is you know what we call ourselves is an independent sales office in this mm -hmm. industry. Um, and uh, I think, uh, you know, it's probably changed and hopefully gotten a bit better. But for a long time, I was one of only about 10 of those that were women owned west of the Mississippi. So there, you know, it was very much a, uh, a bleak landscape when it came to looking for other peers to to talk about the, you know, different parts of running a business as a woman. Yeah, because it is, you know, and, and well, the entrepreneurs out there who are listening, who are men, this is not a male bashing at any point in no. time, but it is very different being a woman in an industry that is either largely masculine or just even starting a business at all. So yeah. what's some advice you have to those women out there who, you know, are either going it alone in their entrepreneur spirit or interested even in that financial world? What is, you know, maybe a way that they can get started or maybe even just why they should get started in it? Yeah, I, I think women are, and again, I, I hook onto your question, your statement, Megan. Yeah, definitely not a, this is not a bashing, uh, <laughs> you know, segment here. Uh, it's just a different way. I think, you know, I'm very much a person that believes in a meritocracy. Yeah. It's not male or female. It's obviously at the end of the day, whoever is best at their job. Yeah. But I do think women do bring a, an interesting perspective into business. Mm -hmm. Um, just like any other person or personality, they they have different skills that they can bring to it that I think shouldn't be avoided. And um, you know what I started out doing was I found I I looked at my industry. I started to seek out the few women that I could find in the industry, and I kind of you know bless them. They were so kind. I kind of glommed onto them like you know like a little critter. Like I just want <laughs> tell me everything you know kind of thing. It, it, you know I I would say ask as many possible questions as you can. I mean, yeah. there's, you know, it's a stupid statement, but there are no dumb questions. Never. I never felt silly asking questions. Um, and I think uh, very much attend anything you possibly can. You, you know, I know one says the worst thing you can do is waste someone's time or their money. But I, I you know, when you're first starting out and you just don't know, I attended countless events, Megan. Mm -hmm. I mean, anything I could think of that was slightly finance focused, yep. um, any sort of networking thing, whether it was male, female, small business, you know, anything that had a theme I thought would help me add mm -hmm. to um, my library of knowledge, I just immediately attended. And you start to learn what is important and what is insignificant. And, you know, I, I felt like I really didn't waste any time. It was mm -hmm. just, I made great, I mean, the beauty is you never to never know who you're going to meet. Like we yeah. talked about people being that great, that great opportunity, that great unifying thing you never know. And, and I just loved that aspect was I met a ton of people. Mm -hmm. I got a lot of knowledge and really all it cost me in the end was obviously your time your time yeah. is very important but if that's what you're going to put towards something and start a start a business it's absolutely worth it to 150 percent yeah and i think it's really important you know that that women venture out into you know other fields that like you said they, they bring a different perspective and yeah. it also helps you know others know hey Look, there's someone out there who's been doing it. There's someone out there who's trying it. We can yes. do that together. And and I think also, yes. you know, just in general, as far as when it comes to conversations around money, men and women speak and think about it quite differently. Yes. Um, and so having a woman-led business where you're like, okay, and especially in finance and pay, where it's like, you know, I think about money very differently. Women tend to be a little more risk averse. That's the natural yes. state. Well, yes. risk aversion and, and collecting money sometimes don't go hand in hand. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's and it, even taking the, the male or female component aside, I mean, mm -hmm. it it's a very uh, my word I use over and over, Megan, is intimate. Mm -hmm. It's an intimate part of your business. It's yeah. an intimate part of anybody's life when you're talking about the dollars, the foundation for a business. And especially when we work with certain businesses like in the restaurant or other industries, these are industries where the margin is razor thin. 
And they are literally sometimes working day to day. Whatever money they're coming in is determining the amount of staff, the things they're going to offer next day. So it is a mission critical component to how they run their business. And you just really can't be flippant or accept or think that you know everything. And that's a difficult conversation, again, male or female, we have with customers that we yeah. meet with is there's a lot of assumptions made. There is a lot of thrown trust at a, a solution and they just kind of, uh, you understand as an entrepreneur, you don't have a lot of time to devote to certain things. When yeah. you have 87 things on your to-do list, the minute you think you can check something off, great, you're moving on to the next thing. And then you realize six months have gone by and you haven't looked at your solution. Like, is this actually working for me? Yep. Am I actually getting a fair price for it? Yep. Yeah, I noticed it didn't work like 15 different times, but we're up and running now again. So is it okay? And, you know, no, no, no uh, disrespect to the business owners, but they just don't have time to revisit that. And when you bring up that conversation, they just sort of cringe and they're just kind of like, oh God, I don't want to talk about that. I already dealt with that. It's in the drawer, yeah. leave me alone. And I go, you know what, it's it, it, it's worth it, even for an hour conversation. And it's funny what you unearth too, Megan, because either <laughs> there's these faces I say you see, like they're happy, they're relieved, or they're angry and upset yeah. because they realize that they've been taken advantage of. Yeah. And, and there's no way they can take that part back, but at least we can say, you know, with PolyPay and whatever, going forward, you know, we've got a path for you. We can change it now. Let's change your, let's change your path now. Yeah, no, I think that's super, super important when it comes to, you know, supporting customers and mm -hmm. all entrepreneurs have this piece of it too. Um, it, you kind of get a little bit more intimate. Like you said, you talk about that intimate part with business owners, which is money. And so you have that need to have really good customer support and really good, yes. you know, back back office for, for yourself because I'm, I'm sure yes. that you have a team. So yes. for those out there, you know, as you've developed this team over the years since you started your business and what do you find is really important when it comes to customer service and, and the people that you have serving your customers? What kind of things yes. come up for you in that that are super important? I, I think it's very important that you find people that are aligned with your mission and your goal for your business. They really, you know, anyone can come in from nine to five and do a job, but in this kind of business where you're getting, you know, if you're doing your job correctly, you're getting a lot of phone calls where people have questions and these are entrepreneurs that don't have time and you need to take on a task from them. You have to be okay with that. You have to be able to deal with people that are upset over the phone. You have to deal with people that are confused and need to have their hand held. Maybe they've never even taken cards before, or this is a whole new thing for them. So you have to have that sort of belief and dedication um, and understanding and kind of a commiseration for the people that are the under, on the other side of that phone. And it takes a certain person. And you know, I can say that we've, we've, we've gone through a lot of people at Polypay. We have. I mean, like any other business, there's just, you realize whether, you know, I've had to make the decision or the previous, you know, employee had to kind of uh, take themselves out of the equation and realize they aren't work worth, you, they, aren't, they aren't working correctly for mm -hmm. this kind of business. Uh, you, as soon as you find that click, and I feel that's where we've been probably the last two, three years where we've really had our stride with customers. Mm -hmm. Um, you can feel that gel and you can feel that electricity. I, I'm romanticizing this bit, but you can, you can feel it in the office when people are, you know, taking phone calls and there's almost like a very maternal aspect. No problem. Mm -hmm. We'll take care of it. We'll get right back to you. You don't need to call. We'll get on the phone for you. We'll be right out there to fix it if their terminal or something's not working. You yeah. really have to find people that make it their passion. And I'm very, very proud to say that we are really at a point now for the past few years where that is a team I have where we take calls on the weekends. We take, we realize businesses, you know, Megan aren't nine to five. Yeah. Um, yep. People, especially when they've got family led businesses and they've got every person and their family working at any kind of hour to make things happen. We respect their time and we take their calls outside mm -hmm. normal line, you know, calls, uh, normal times where. I've had, you know, employees were out mowing the lawn. I've had people that were out on a bike ride and they're yeah. like, hey, I'm just on your street. Um, you know, give me 10 minutes to bike on over there if you don't mind me coming on over there and deal with it. Yeah. Um, when you find people that are that dedicated and believe in, in the mission and what you're delivering, that solution you're providing, mm -hmm. um, 
you know, I feel like we've really succeeded there, that they're out there being our reputation every day and, and explain, you know, and representing the, the best of what we can offer. And I love that. That's when you know you've really hit your stride. Yeah. And I think it's really important for people listening that, you know, we often talk, you know, I've had a past guests where we talk about a team isn't always employees. Sometimes it's the vendors that you choose mm-hmm. to work with. Sometimes mm-hmm. it's those, you know, contractors that you choose to work with, but having them really dedicated and tied into that mission, I think yes. you're right. It makes such a difference in the way that you, the owner, are able to actually get out there and run the business, you know, yes. or even step away from the business from time to time and take a vacation yes. and things like that because yes. you know that it's handled. Yes. Um, so what's one way that you found over those years? Because you said it's, you know, it's been a couple of years that you really had the good click, but what for you did you find was a, you know, aside from getting that right person, but maybe yourself finding how, how did you find those right people for yourself and then get them educated? Because I know that's a big piece of it as well. Yes. And I think too, you, uh, I think entrepreneurs should know that your business isn't going to be static. You know, you start your business off with a certain identity in mind. You think that this is going to be the face you're going to wear and this is the solution you're going to come up with. This is the problem you're going to solve. And you know, it changed for us over years. We were looking at different industries, different verticals, different types of solutions. Um, mm-hmm. So as we started to find our niche, with what we wanted to, you know, how and what we wanted to partner with on the products and other offerings. Um, I think, you know, we kind of, we changed our, our makeup and our face mm-hmm. a few times. And sure. so as you do that, you have to kind of change your people as well. Mm-hmm. And um, I think I just encourage them to please, you know, again, this is something I picked up from being in larger businesses yeah. is I'm very much an open door policy person. Um, I, I love the line that you're only as, uh, you know, as intelligent as the people, you know, that you surround yourself with. Yeah. So uh, nobody is better than anybody else. And you have to be open to uh, great suggestions. And I have to be honest, I've had, custom, you know, employees have made great suggestions because they're out there in you know, as an entrepreneur, you're kind of up at that 10,000 foot level. And when you are trying to come back down to Main Street and talking to your customers and your employees, they're seeing all those really minute tweaks and things that you're not picking up on. So you have to be open to that and listening to that and uh, be open to changing how you operate based on their feedback. And, And they've got eyes in places that you haven't looked in a while. Yeah. And, and I think that that's what's helped me figure out what kind, not only what kind of people I should have, but those people probably in turn turned Polypay into what it is now because yeah. of their feedback and insights. No, that's, it's a hugely important suggestion for people out there. You know, no matter who you're pulling into your team, always A, be willing to change up the team because yes. there's just time. It's just time when, the, when yes. the mission of the company or the company goes a different direction, not everybody can come along, but also listen to that. Listen yes, to the people. I, I think some of the, you know, we all have the horror stories of the boss who was just like, nope, I, I know everything. And you just, as an employee, are watching this train wreck. You're like, yes, wow. And so and that's so true. I, I mean, I truly, that, that, that strikes a chord with me because yeah. that was really the biggest reasons I said for leaving those big companies. They yeah. just, they didn't want to hear anything for whatever their own fault or not. They didn't have the time to listen to that. And I thought, mm-hmm. I don't. I desperately don't want to be that because that that just you know it it, it resonated deep with deeply with me with what had happened to me before and I thought yeah. no I don't want to be that person and you can't stop learning either I mean mm-hmm. you ne- never expect to learn everything never think never assume you know everything there's always somebody smarter faster better uh, you know at your heels and that should be the thing that spurs you every day and gets you up in the morning no I I absolutely agree that it's that ever learning that. I, I was watching, I think it was a TED Talk or something that was talking about, you know, there's the stage of doing, that there's the stage of learning, and you always have to be willing to go back and forth between the two. You can't ever just Absolutely. stay in the, the doing side because then you, you, no. you're never growing um, no, in your exactly. business. Yeah. So for people out there, you know, women or even men who are ready to start a business or maybe in those early stages of business, I know you've you've been doing this for a little while. You're about a decade in, you know, running that mm-hmm. own company. What's some advice you have for people who are early on or just really wanting to get started in, in a business as they're in the early stage? Yeah, I, I think the big thing uh, people get caught up in is uh, a bit of the romanticism of starting a business. Mm-hmm. They, are, they are picturing themselves already, you know, 10 years down the road down, you know, they, they see what their look and feel is and their logo and their colors and like how nice the website is. And this is what they're going to project. 
I think no matter what, uh, the big thing people seem to figure forget about is what is the problem you're going to solve? Mm-hmm. You have to and then actively come up with how you're going to solve that problem. Because the point is, you can have a wonderful idea, right, Megan? And it looks beautiful on, on you know, on, on its, you know, dry erase board and you're looking yeah. at it. But you have to find someone ultimately at the end of the day that is going to pay for your services, yep. right? I mean, someone needs to trade money or trade information or sign up with you and make a commitment to you. And if you don't have something that is alluring or stands out or you can put, you know, your your word behind, then there's, you know, all the odd ideas in the world are fantastic, but that, you know, when rubber hits the road, you have to have a solution in place. And yeah. I think that's the thing a lot of people, you know, forget about and they just romanticize it and think it's going to take right off. And, and they just kind of assume, well, they're going to sign up with me because why not? Well, why should they with you at the end of the day? Because I remember that, you know, probably two or three months in, Megan, I, you know, we had some customers, but it was going more slowly than I thought. Mm -hmm. And I was just very irritated with myself and with everything. And I thought, okay, all right, Jamie, the other people that are in this industry with you, there are companies that have been here for 50 years that have been doing what you're doing. So why don't you take a minute, turn back around, you know, and and rejigger things, rejigger your expectations, but don't slow down your efforts. I think that's a big thing is people just, you know, imagine themselves on the 42nd floor already with, you know, a mahogany table and, you know, their feet up. Right. And that's all well and good. And you hope you get there. But, you know, that that's a much that's a long road and just be prepared for it. You have to be prepared for it and knowing you can't ex- you can't determine or come up with everything that's going to happen. There are going to be scenarios thrown your way you would have never in your wildest <laughs> dreams imagined, uh, and you have to be prepared for that. And you're just going to have to be ready to pivot and think yeah. fast. Yep. No, I think that that's some really amazing advice for those out there who are early early stage in that business. Is you really really have to focus on the work, like the. <laughs> Yeah. What am I solving? Yeah. And then why am I solving it? And just stick to that because no matter yeah. what else comes at you, I, yes. other other guests and I hear it all the time, talk about shiny objects where you're like, oh, that looks good. And you're like, nope, this is, nope, this yes. is my thing. And just sticking right. to the course. I think that's yes. really great advice because yes. Yes. yes, we'd all love to have the jet set life and our business just took off. And it, the, the reality is less than Less than 1% of 1% of 1% actually get there fast. <laughs> yes. and, you know, and I think that social media is kind of a, uh, uh, a bad actor in the sense that they, they, they gloss over so much of that. And it's, what's that phrase they say, kind of Instagram, rea- you know, post versus reality. Like what's really going on behind the scenes, yeah. you know, once you take that uh, face tune off of the whole world yep. of, of working on a business, and that's the beauty of it behind the scenes too is the ugly nasty parts of it dirty parts of it exhausting parts of it but when you can turn around and realize that's what you put together i think that's amazing and never never forget either the good or the bad times of that because that's what's making you add track ahead of you every day i absolutely absolutely agree that that's that that hard work in is then what you turn around later and go oh Wow. Yeah, Look at what that. I've done. Yeah. 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 That's that's the mm-hmm. stuff you remember. Not the, not the mm-hmm. the, fa- the flashy stuff. The flashy stuff was fun, but yeah. it's the yeah. day-to-day stuff. So really great advice. Jamie, mm-hmm. I have really enjoyed uh chatting with you, especially as a Thank seasoned you. entrepreneur, um at, you know, just hearing your perspective. Um if there are people out there who would like to get connected with you, maybe learn a little bit more about PolyPay, the work that you do, or just get connected with you in general, what is one sure. really great way for people to connect with you today? Sure. We have uh, our website, which is polypay.com. That's P-O-L-Y-P-A-Y.com. We've got lots of articles, news, information about myself, my team, um, and ways to connect with us there. So visit there and kind of read about our story. And if you're interested, reach out to us and we'd love to have a conversation. We enjoy learning about people's businesses and seeing where we can make uh, make a difference for them. Fantastic. To the audience, tap the link down below to get connected with Jamie and her team. Jamie, thank you for joining me on today's show. I've enjoyed thank having you, so you as a guest and this has been a great conversation. Thank you, Megan. Yes, to the audience, thank you for joining us. And I am wishing you peace as you flow off to the rest of your business days. We'll talk again soon. Thank you for watching this episode of Flow Working, the Entrepreneur's Podcast. Please make sure to subscribe to the channel. And while you're here, watch another episode for more advice about being a successful entrepreneur.